Hello and welcome to Cooks and Gold for our rolling mill series. I'm Lara. Now, have you ever had difficulty picking out a rolling mill? Maybe you're starting your jewelry making journey for the first time, or maybe you've been doing this for years. Either way, we'll find the best choices for you. A rolling mill is a great addition to any jeweler's workshop. The primary function is simple. It's to reduce the thickness of sheet metal and wire. So why is buying one so difficult? Well, it's a big investment, so it's important you get the right one. But how do you choose a rolling mill? Well, there are a couple of things you need to consider. First is how much usage you estimate it's going to get. And second is budget. If you're anticipating a continuous amount of usage and you have the budget for it, you might want to check out an electric rolling mill. We stock two by Durston. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be focusing on the manual rolling mills. Now, there are two types of manual rolling mills. There's the direct drive rolling mill and the geared rolling mill. And as you can see, they both look rather similar. Now, the direct drive rolling mill gets its name from the fact the handle is attached directly to the rollers. So one turn of the handle equates to one full rotation of the rollers. Now, this can take a lot of physical effort and they're generally cheaper. Which brings me to the feature on the side of this one. Now, instead of the handle being attached directly to the rollers, it's attached to this small gearbox, and that transfers the turn of the handle via the gears, which significantly reduces the amount of effort used to turn the rollers, and that makes passing metal through a lot easier. We need to talk about gear ratios. Now, the gear ratios for these reduction gear rolling mills are listed as six to one, five to one, and four to one. Now, what that means in a four to one case is that it takes four turns of the handle to complete one full rotation of the rollers. But wait, isn't that more effort? So even though it takes more turns of the handle to rotate the rollers, it takes a lot less effort, allowing the gears to do the work for you. So it's like riding a bike in low gear. A direct drive only requires one rotation, but it takes a lot more strength. Now we have an idea of the two types of manual rolling mill, it's important to take a look at what we're going to make with them. So there are a few types of rolling mill. There's flat, wire and combination. So if you're looking for a rolling mill to exclusively reduce the thickness of sheet metal, then a flat rolling mill is perfect for you. A wire rolling mill is used to roll and reduce the gauge of wire. It will roll the wire into a square cross section. The round rollers will do exactly the same thing, but it will roll the wire into a round cross section. Now, if you want the flexibility to do both, then a combination mill is perfect for you. It has a flat section for your sheet metal and it has a groove section for your wires, but it does reduce the width of the rollers by having both available. Alternatively, some rolling mills come with extensions which give you extra rollers to the side. So for jewellery makers working in a busy manufacturing environment, you might want to invest in a double rolling mill. It's the best of both worlds without compromising on roller size. Now, the next thing we need to consider when choosing a rolling mill is kind of obvious. It's size. And the two things we need to look at when looking at size is the opening width and the roller width. An important factor to look at when you're shopping for rolling mills is the maximum opening width. Now that's the distance between the two rollers when they're completely open. So if you're intending on rolling ingots or thicker stock, then go for a rolling mill which has a bigger opening width. Sounds simple enough, right? The next is the roller width. Now that determines the maximum width of the sheet metal that can pass through the rolling mill. Cooks and Gold stocks a whole range of different sizes. The wider the roller, the more flexibility you get with flat sheet and wire. The diameter of the rollers is also worth mentioning. The bigger they are, the less likely they are to cause curving on sheet and wire. A rolling mill is an investment that most jewellery makers only have to make once. They can last a lifetime if they're properly maintained and serviced. Durston are the leading manufacturers of rolling mills in this industry, known for their precision, reliability and durability. Durston features high quality steel rollers, a cast iron frame for strength and stability and self-lubricating and maintenance-free bearings. They can last a very long time. If budget is your main concern, then why not start off with one of our value range or one of our mini mill range? Durston comes in a number of ranges to suit your budget. 
The DRM mills, both powered and manual, are Durston's highest specification range of mills, with no compromise on design, quality or components. DRM mills are found in jewellery manufacturing workshops all over the world and they offer years of reliable service. Agiles are a lower cost option because of savings in lighter casing and also there's a T-bar instead of a hand wheel, but they're still designed to give years of reliable rolling. There's no right or wrong choice when choosing a rolling mill, but hopefully this video has helped that choice be a little bit easier. Thank you for watching.